Who remembers the BJ and Bill show all those years ago on WOLZ? Well, many have said they missed the show, and guess what? They're back. Welcome to the BJ and Bill podcast. Welcome to episode 31, or you know, as I like to say, season two, episode seven, BJ and Bill, the podcast. Amazing. Episode seven. How many, how many do we do for the first season? Do we do 12 or 16? How many do we do? We did 24. Oh, 24. Oh, okay. Okay. We got some time then. It's not like we're already running out of second season here or something like that. No, 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 no. We don't have to worry about the cliffhanger yet. Cliffhanger. Perfect. (laughs) We'll worry about that when the time comes. How are you? Ah, good. Got back from a few days uh, in uh, our old stopping grounds, Fort Myers. How is life in Fort Myers? I I trust they are recovering from the storm still. Well, let me tell you. Uh Uh-huh. I've been there a few times, but I have not been to Fort Myers Beach. But over the last weekend, I went out on Fort Myers Beach. And I know you know Fort Myers Beach. Very well. Some of our listeners know Fort Myers Beach, but a lot of them throughout the country do not know Fort Myers Beach. Right. You used to be able to, you know, drive down the main thoroughway. Right. And all it was was houses, condos. Right. Stores. Storefronts, yep. Hotels. Yep. Astero Boulevard. Yep. You, you didn't really see hardly ever a glimpse of the Gulf of Mexico. No, because it was there was condos and houses blocking the view. I mean, they had the beach view. Now you drive down the road. Mm-hmm. You'll see a business. You'll see a house every once in a while. You'll see a condo every once in a while. But you get to see a lot of beach. Wow. Yeah. And I mean... A lot of beach. And as you look on both sides of the road, we saw one house that still was just turned basically upside down. Wow. And I will say a lot of the hotels and businesses, I figured maybe by now they'd be opening up. They are all still working on their, there was very, very few hotels, if any, Hmm. that were open on Fort Myers Beach. Where are all of those people still living? I wonder. Now, I will mention this, too. As we drove down, you know, you you saw a few of the houses that were being worked on. Right. And I would say at least 10 or 20 of these houses, because these are nice. You know, they're they're right on the Gulf of Mexico. You know, sure. These were multimillion dollar homes. I'm sure these are people that have money. Absolutely. But a lot of them, I would say at least a dozen or two that we drive by, you'd see the house. Mm-hmm. And you'd see, you know, scaffolding and, you know, you could see that things were going on as they were fixing it. Right. But you would also see like an RV out oh. front where the person who probably lived there all year round or at least came down in the summer. I mean, the winter was now living in the RV. Wow. Wow. And like I said, most of the hotels had, you know, fences around them. Yeah. And you could see that, you know, there was things going on, but with a fence all the way around your parking lot. Yeah. You know, and you're not getting customers, that's for sure. No. So it was it was a very, very strange cruise. I went, we 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 went to Fort Myers Beach over, you know, uh Fort Myers, the big bridge you go over to sure. go to Fort Myers. Sure. And then as you know, if you know the area, you can drive down a long thoroughway which is kind of the main beach road there. Went all the way down to Bonita Springs. Yeah, yeah. Then back out on 41. So, I mean, we we saw it all in there. And my son said before, now there was one area around uh, Lover's Key. Mm -hmm. There was that big uh, park that was at Lover's Key. I don't know if you remember it or not. Lover's Key State Park, yes. Been there many times. And there was like a lot of, you know, like little pavilions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was half full of trash and debris and my son said last time he was there there was like 10 to 15 times more trash and debris that they've already hauling out okay wow 10 times wow wow and there was a lot that we saw yeah so it's going to be a while before fort myers beach is ready is back and it as i said it'll be totally different because you know like i said you used to drive down the road you'd see very little of the gulf of mexico because everything was on the other side of the the buildings. Sure. Well, you saw a lot of the uh, coastline as you drove down the main road. 
that's amazing. I, I, I'm really feeling like I want to see it myself. And so maybe one of these days when I have a whole day or two off, you know, or something, I just drive down there and, and, and do that. Cause yes, I know that drive that you're talking about exactly. Everybody does who lived in that area. I mean, like you said, our audience around the world, they don't know about it, but there was a drive. You could drive out at the North side of the beach and you'd take the bridge over onto Fort Myers beach, which is an Island, a barrier Island. And then you'd drive South for uh, 20 miles, maybe not that far. And then you'd take another, you know, little causeway back over to the mainland and you were in Bonita Springs and yeah, everybody who ever lived there or visited that beach knows it really well. And yeah, that's amazing. Amazing. What See that's, and that's, kids in the geography class why they call it a barrier island because it did exactly as the good lord intended it protects the mainland from the ocean by being a Remember, barrier folks, to the weather that was a little over six months ago that wasn't yeah. like you know last month right right last week that was like over six months ago right and right. we are just about a month away from the beginning well i guess we're two months away from the beginning, oh, the beginning of, yeah. of hurricane season all over again. But they said, and of course, you never know, but they said that was that storm that you get every 300 years. <laughs> for a one, yes, for one specific place. I mean, like, you know, you picked out Fort Myers Beach on a map and you said, oh, what are the odds of a storm actually coming ashore right here? 300 years. That's probably right. That doesn't mean there won't be another hurricane for 300 years. It'll just hit somewhere else. Or, you know, come from a different, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And, and I remember after the storm talking to my, to my ex-wife, you know, shout out to Miss Paula, who, you know, lives there in Fort Myers still, in fact, not far from your son, they live in the same general area down in South Fort Myers. And, and she said, yeah, you know, you know, from when you live there, you know, that one day, one hurricane is going to be like, this one's for you. As the old beer commercial used to say, this one's for you. And she said, and this one was for us. So that was ours. So hopefully not for another 300 years. You're right. You're right. And what's really strange now, we're talking about the hurricane six months ago. Right. These tornadoes Craziness. that are hitting across the, the southern you know, country. Unbelievable. Again, very strong. Lots of devastation. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's, it's, I don't know what's wrong with the weather. I don't know if it's the global warming. I don't know if it's like. Uh, some, I don't know, but things have really gone awry with weather across the country. And even the snowstorms, we have our, our friends who moved up to Minnesota to be by their children. Mm -hmm. Just last week, just a few days ago, they got another big snowstorm that came through. And our friends in California with, you know, it was drought, drought, drought. Oh, now we have too much water. So it's like, hello, what are you doing? I mean, and and I know um, I'm small friends with a with a guy who does a lot of YouTube videos, and he lives in California. Uh, and he says there was a whole dry there's a whole lake bed area. They called it Ghost Lake. Um, it had a it had a real name. He says, but but it's filling up again, and 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 is usually like dry, like usually nothing there with it, maybe a creek flowing through the middle. And he says in parts of California that have not had water standing water like ponds and lakes and stuff like that now are it's flooding it you know we went from drought to flood so somewhere somehow mother nature is po'd <laughs> mother nature is like take it easy guys so well anyway. this is not a political show but another right. political thing is well swat speaking of the weather speaking of weather is, is like unnatural more things are happening in the world, even politically, that's just unreal. I, I, I remember, and I thought, and I had to look it up because I, I, I want to start using this quote. I thought to myself, there's a, there's a cool quote that I used to hear, and I thought it was like a Native American curse, and it's not. It's, it, they, they don't know where it came from. But it's, you know, may you live in interesting times is both a blessing and a curse. And we are living through some damned interesting times right now, aren't we? And I mean, it's, they're not the kind that you would say, yeah, I want to live through those interesting things. No, it's weird out there. And the whole planet seems like it. I don't know. 
you're right. It's not a political show. It's just darn weird in so many different ways in so many different places that I don't know what the heck's going on and I don't know what we do to fix it. Well, yeah, I do, but it's not a political show, so I'm not going to go there. I don't just think be it's kind really to each other. What's that? <laughs> What'd you say there? I said, we just be nice to each other for a change. Damn it. Can Sorry. we do that? That's the question. Can we do that? I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know. It's just going it, to, it's, it's, it's going to be strange, but you know, even in my father's day, you know, he talked about different things that went on and for them, it was like, oh my gosh, things are strange. They had the missile crisis. They had, you know, so they went through their phases also. It's just, I guess when you're, I don't know, I feel like they're worse than they were, but I guess maybe when you're living it there, you know, they went through depression, you know, there was depression, a, a major depression, world war. So lots of things have went down over the years. And maybe just if you're living in that moment, you're going, oh, my gosh, I don't remember when things have been this bad. But you move on to other generations and, and they right. have different problems, but maybe they all say the same thing. Yeah. Yes. I mean, on the on the face of it, yes, I totally agree with you that, yeah, that our parents and their parents and, you know, generation after generation all has their own um, challenges, shall we say, their own problems to face, their own things to get through. And you're right when it's you, you know, well, they always say that, you know, it's like when you're watching the news, you know, and our friends who in Fort Myers who went through the hurricane, you know, when it's when you're sitting in, you know, when BJ sitting in his Orlando suburb, Bill sitting in his, you know, Gainesville area, when the storm hits, I don't, you know, Savannah, Georgia, you go, oh, that's, ooh, that's no good. When the storm hits where you live, that's a tragedy. You know, it's like it goes from being, oh, that's bad news to tragic when it happens to you. It just seems like it just and again, you're right. We don't want to get political and we don't want to get too much into the you know bad news of stuff. But it just to me and maybe it's the fact that, you know, we have 24 seven news outlets that are screaming the headlines at us all the time and social media that screams at us all the time and everything, everything, everything. It just seems like it might be worse now and maybe you're right maybe it's just in the in the old days old days quote unquote of our parents and our grandparents they didn't have social media it, there was still bad stuff happening but we just didn't all know about it we just didn't all experience it the same way we do now i don't know we'll find out we'll find out i guess maybe in the great beyond we will know it all as they say oh man Oh, that's it's I, I, I don't I don't know if I will or not, but I look forward to finding out. <laughs> but I know I was out in the backyard of my son's. Right. Who has like, uh, you know, like, what do you I guess they're just called swings. But, you know, they have the you know, they have the, the top over them, you know, and they're nice and yeah. comfortable swings yeah. and you swing yeah. on them. Backyard swing. And Very nice. He's got a really nice, you know, backyard. He's got a, you know, a fire pit and he's got three or four swings, you know, I mean. Cool. Just all around the fire pit, and we're all out there just kind of swinging the other day. And I said, you know, man, I really feel sorry for the youth of today. Yes, because things are just getting incredibly crazy. And like I said, maybe when my father was going through a lot of these things, he said, "Man, I really feel sorry for the youth of today." Meaning you? Yes. So, <laughs> right. I guess you know. I guess answers will be determined at a later date you know i just don't know but right just, we'll find out like we're living through some real some really strange times i agree with that and i honestly do think it's a little more a little more strange i mean i'm not a historian although i was a history minor in college that was 50 years ago but it does seem a little more strange now it does seem a little more weird a little more amped up than in the past i mean you know when our, when I don't know about your family, well, your family's been doing the farming thing for a while. My grandfather on my father's side came from the old country in 1917 through Ellis Island in New York. His name is still on the records there, arrived in 1917. And, you know, with like 
I mean, it's the cliche, but it's true. So many millions of people arrived from Europe and those places with nothing. And, you know, they found a place to live, found a job, built a life, built a family, you know, and then they were able to make their way by their through their own hard work and their own effort and all of that. And I don't that seems like it's I don't know that that's still possible. I don't know because of the way things have gone, especially with how expensive with inflation, how expensive everything is to be able to say, I'm going to start with nothing. And in a couple of years, buy my own house. Ah, Good luck with that. I mean, it's not impossible. I'm just saying it's a lot harder. It feels like this episode is made possible by PwC. When unprecedented times are all the time, it's time to start walking the talk. Leaders like you turn to PwC to see and stay ahead. Upskill your workforce, use intelligent automation, and transform big ideas into breakthrough outcomes. Explore the human-led, tech-powered solutions that help you thrive. It's all part of The New Equation. Learn more at thenewequation.com. Maybe we should have a historian on the show to talk to us about it or something. I don't know. Well, you know, here outside of Orlando, I'm in Claremont, Florida. Right. And I was looking at, you know, we just recently bought a place. Yep. And and it's much more expensive than what I paid for my place in Winter Haven. Right. The prices are higher. Of course. And then, of course, uh, you know, the place that I lived in, Fort Myers, I just just I was just looking on the, uh, you know, the apps for real estate. Oh, sure. You can go to Zillow or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Just for the heck of it over the weekend. Right. And houses in Southwest Florida right now, you can't, I, I mean, yeah, that you can find a few, but there's very few houses in Fort Myers. And I remember we sold ours for like uh, 340 I believe. In but Fort you Myers? Can't find, huh? In Fort Myers, you sold that? Yeah. yeah. But, but I don't think any, I couldn't find a house in Fort Myers that wasn't, you know, just a, a junk pile. Right. That was under four and a half. Five hundred thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah, that's scary. So who who can you know somebody starting out who can afford that? That's my point. I mean, that's the point of of being able to being able to get in, you know, to find a place to live or whatever. So yeah, obviously it's not Fort Myers. Probably a little bit of a different animal right now because, like we were talking about with the storm and the people looking for housing and you know all of that. But it, anywhere, anywhere nowadays is just crazy. All right, so it's just two old men complaining about life here so what else now we'll talk though you said you know where will we live and and where you know like your family came over right listen to this experts Uh say experts say by 2030 there will be daily space tourism flights (laughs) really now tourism what do they mean you're going to the moon for the weekend you know you're gonna you know get a a moon front uh, hotel Ah, yes but my condo faces the earth rise um <laughs> no not 20 20 30 that's only seven years that's only seven years. so i would say what they're probably talking about is just like well and i mean they what's his name our our my old captain kirk william shatner did that he got a ride on the on the amazon spaceship uh into space i think it was the amazon one it might have been it might have been elon's spaceship i don't know so i can imagine yes that you would have regular flights into space just to go up and do a few orbits of the earth you know zero gravity have some fun with that and then come back i i can't i can't imagine you, you to go to the moon that poof that that and you have to have a hotel there you know you'd have to have a <laughs> condo there or something so that would take some work not impossible, but it would it, not not by twenty thirty. I love the idea, though. I I I would I would do that if I had the money. I would definitely try that. I imagine it's going to be quite expensive. What would it be like to be? You know, I've never done any of the simul simulations or anything, but I wonder what it'd be like to be. You know, like just weightless, be able to float Our around. Space, yeah, float around. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. I I think it would be. Now, having said that. I do remember that I went and I think I've talked about this on one of our very, very first shows that I was that I thought when I was a kid, I wanted to be an airplane pilot an air, you know, like a like a jet pilot, like an airline pilot. And then I went when I was in when I first moved to Fort Myers for my birthday, 
my then wife bought me a little airplane ride on one of the little biplanes that flew out of Page Field. And I recognized how airsick I got from flopping around in the sky, <laughs> from flying around, you know, and, uh, you know, big turns and all that. And I'm like, okay, maybe this isn't really for me. So if I was weightless, would you, because I've heard that that can really cause your body to like, shall we say, uh, you know, go a little crazy and start barfing things up and stuff like that. All right. Isn't this exciting what we're talking about? So I'm not sure the zero gravity thing would work for me, but I think I'd like to try it. I think yeah, I, I think would. I think I'd like to try it, too. But I think it's almost like anything else, like skiing or I think you have to, you know, learn how to control it or, or learn right. how to, you know, operate it. I would think you just right. don't go up and go. Okay. Whoa. Oh, how do I <laughs> Whoa. turn? How do I move, you know, the whole is it, world is turning. Oh no, I'm just is, turning. You know, the whole world is like moving. Swimming around underwater. Me. How do I do this? <laughs> right. 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 So that's. I don't know. That's interesting. I don't know. Let's 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 plan on that for 2030. What's it? We'll be in season. What? We'll be in season eight or nine by then of the BJ <laughs> and Bill podcast. We'll uh we'll figure that out when that happens. So be I, that's a great idea. Sure. Space tourism. Space tourism. I love it. Meet George Jetson. <laughs> well, you saw, I mean, I've posted that meme on my Facebook page of how the Jetsons basically invented everything. They, they like, they invented the Zoom call. They invented telemedicine. They invented, you know, the treadmill for walking the dog, everything, all except for the fold up car. I'm still waiting for the fold up jet car that goes into my briefcase and I take it with me where I go. That's the it's part coming. I want. It's coming. It's coming, folks. It's coming. So I love Maybe that. that's what they'll be happening in, you know, 2030. <laughs> I'm all for it. I'm all for it. So that sounds awesome. So anyway, look at that. We've just been yakking away for 20 minutes here. This is great. So how are you doing anyway? I mean, we haven't really done any of the basic stuff here. What's going on in your life? I'm doing good. I had a lot of fun with my son. Yep. Um, you know, he has the podcast network that we operate on. Yes. He has a couple of internet radio stations, Shaq Boo Radio with Shaquille O'Neal. We know it well. And uh, his muddy country, country radio station. Yep. His newest venture is making uh, commercial free, like stuff that's not, well, like most things have BMI, ASCAP. You can't use those in commercials and stuff. Right. He's talking about license mu music. He's, he's making music that you can. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, they were there making songs on Friday. Cool. And so I spent the day Friday in the studio watching the process oh. and the way they did it. Very interesting stuff. So they are recording. I mean, they're probably not bringing in like, or are they bringing in musicians, a band, or are they, is it all like keyboard and whatever? Uh, a lot is keyboard. Right. They are bringing in electric guitar players. Cool. They are bringing in um, a bass player. Wow. They've brought in drummers to put down beats. Right. And then, of course, you know, I guess you can buy these things. There's some place where you go out and you can buy like a drummer doing a, you know, like a, a measure yes. of a different drum beat. Yes. Some of them you buy, some of them you make. And they made a few, they bought a few. And, you know, like it, it wasn't the same music, but one of the songs they were doing is When Doves Cry by mm -hmm. prince mm -hmm. everything was similar but obviously it wasn't so it wasn't copyrighted right and that was the bed they were working on while i was there huh. uh the other you know they, they did four beds all together and like i said some of them you know a lot of them had you know electric guitar acoustic mm -hmm. guitars bass guitars wow all those musicians come into the studio wow but what's interesting they record well they do this two in recording sessions they would record first like the beat. Right. They'd find the drum beat they wanted to use. Then they would put in the keyboard and the sound effects with keyboards. Then they'd put in the guitars. Then they'd put in the bass line. And it was it was just it was interesting to watch, you know, how they did it. Layer it, layer it together, put all the little bits and pieces together. And then it was interesting too, because you know, everything now is digital and everything is computerized kind of. All of a sudden, the guitar part that maybe they put in this two-minute bed, mm -hmm. they can move part of it over here and then move part of it that they did back over. And when it's all done, it sounds obviously like it was all done at one time. Sure. 
but they could do something that they play towards the end of the song, put it at the beginning. And it was just, it was fun to watch the creative process. I guess that's the proper words to say. There you go. There you go. And that creates right music tracks that you can. So if you're doing, you know, if you're a car dealership in Chicago and you need 60 seconds of music to go under your, you know, new TV or radio commercial, you can buy a track that you like that sounds like something you might have heard before, but it's not the same. So like you said, you don't have to pay for copyright and all that kind of stuff. And then you can use it. You know, you get the license to use it. I have um, a long time ago, I bought a little collection of, they call it royalty free music. When you use it, you just buy it once and you don't have to, because like if I buy, if I want to use, you know, if BJ and Bill come up with a commercial for their podcast and they want to use a Taylor Swift song, I don't know why we do that, but if you want to do it, <laughs> we would have to pay her every time we used it, every time we used it. And, you know, uh, uh, obviously an astronomical amount of money. So, or you can have somebody like your son come along and say, hey, you can buy this 60 second track for one price. You use it all you want. It's yours, you know, et cetera. So yeah, I have, I have a little collection of those that I do because I still, like you, I still do some voice tracks and stuff like that. And occasionally I'll put some music behind it or whatever. So, yeah, I, I know that. And and the the interesting thing is, well, to me, I mean, obviously your son is really smart with this stuff and he's a good business person, obviously. Um, he thinks that's going to be like something that's really going to be a, a, a moneymaker for him. He's hoping. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's hoping. So he doesn't know yet. I'm sure yeah, he's no, talked well, to somebody. They, yeah, they are in the process of putting the the website together. Right. Basically, what it would be if you want to use this music, you can subscribe and use anything on the site that you find, right. or you can like say, "Hey, I would just like to buy this one piece." Mm -hmm. Or you can subscribe, you know, and right use whatever you want. And mm -hmm. and I mean, you and I who have been in the radio business, we know companies that have been like this. Yes. And so he's basically putting it to get now he's in the process of putting it together. He doesn't want, and he's putting together, you know, the instruction of the, you know, the, the website and everything. Right. And of course the back, how you pay for it and everything else. Yep. And he's hoping to launch it, you know, like maybe this fall. Awesome. Awesome. And then like, you know, the trade magazines for radio and I guess there people put people buy this stuff also for, for movies Sure. Uh, for documentaries. Sure. Uh, for, you know, podcast. Some people want a little music under their podcast at different mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, all, all these different companies, then he's going to start, you know, advertising such things. And we'll see where it goes. I'm, I'll be very curious to hear how that works for him because I can't. It sounds like a lot of work. Obviously, it's a lot of work. Like you said, they got you got to bring in musicians and record, and then there's the creative process of piecing it all together and all of that, and and making that happen. And but once you've done it, it's not like it's not like the BJ and Bill podcast where BJ and Bill have to sit down every week and record the podcast and then do a little editing and then upload it and then repeat, you know, rinse and repeat every week. Once you have that track done and complete and finished, now you can sell it as many times as you want, you know, and there's no, it's not like you have to recreate, you know, rebuild any inventory or anything like that. You don't have to. Now, I do think though, they will do that. They will they what? Will, you know, they'll have the initial load, you know, all the songs and right. all the beds you can purchase. Right. But they will build along the way. That'll make the library bigger. Oh, sure. And they'll like, they'll be expanding it constantly. Sure. And, you know, he has to, he has to pay these people. They just don't come in and say, hey, let me play my guitar for you. So, I mean, it, it is a gamble. It, it, yep. You know, he's gambling with, you know, the money that they're 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 paying for all this. But um, we'll see where it leads. I mean, he, he started the podcast Playground, and that's doing quite well for him. He's got Shaq Boo and Muddy Country. PJ and Bill. Yep. Got all yeah. the big podcasts. All I know. <laughs> All the big podcasts at the podcast, the podcast playground. So yeah, go and check of course, it out. He just, he just added, they haven't really produced any of the, the podcasts yet, uh -huh. but uh, you see, I'll, I'm going to name a name. See if you remember him. I'll be sure. The name is familiar, but 
I'm not 100%. Kind of like love R&B stuff, you know? Yeah. He also had a syndicated radio show calling kind of like the same thing, love tracks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, basically, he's going to do a podcast, and it's being produced through the podcast playground. Wow. So he's expanding the uh, expanding the stable of podcasts. Yeah, so he'll be, you know, of course. he'll be on our network. Uh, on our right. <laughs> BJ and Bill, of course, being the flagship podcast of the podcast playground. Of course, uh, being the... Uh, it might be a wing, but I don't know where the... <laughs> We might be we might be a flap on one of the wings <laughs> on one of the planes of the fleet, right? I yeah, because he's got some he's got some big name people that are doing some things for him. So yeah, I know it's amazing. We're, we're, it really is. That's why I said we're just we're just. Thank God he's my son. <laughs> Can you imagine going to another company? Hey, yeah, no. we're going to do a podcast. We want you to be. We want to be on your network. Yeah, right. That's not going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> and you are. Well, we're just two old guys that complain about stuff oh great <laughs> terrific come on on board we got a spot just for you uh not so much all right look at you oh my god well if you would like to get in touch and share your amazing stories of, of anything that we've talked about especially if you've been especially if you've if you've been to fort myers beach if you know that area and you have a story to share about that i i would be curious to see more about that and you can share that with us either through email directly bj and bill podcast at gmail.com again remember it's you just got to spell the and bj a n d bj and bill podcast at gmail.com or more what more folks are doing and i see lots of comments on there so that's awesome on the facebook page just uh, look us up same thing exactly the same bj and bill podcast just do a search for that on uh, facebook and you will find us right awesome let's take a quick break and we will be back in a minute Welcome back. I'm Bill Stevens. That's BJ Odom. This is the BJ and Bill podcast. And as we were just saying before the break, you can reach out and get in touch. BJ and Bill podcast on uh, Facebook or at gmail.com all the same. So there you go. And 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 we're just kind of talking today. I mean, not, not a whole lot of except for the outer space tourism things. We haven't covered a whole bunch of important, important topics. What, what else are you thinking? Th th this one is important. I saw the gears turning there. But why this study was made in the first place, hmm. I have no idea. I don't know where these guys go. We need a study. Let's study this. Because there's money to be made. So Is that why? Yeah, pretty much, I think. What are you talking about? Do old people fart more? <laughs> I'm sorry. Not funny. Funny, not funny. Do <laughs> old people fart more? Or past well, gas, maybe we should. Say. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I I'm okay with either one because you know we're into the we're into the six year old humor around here. Um, <laughs> I I'm gonna say I I'm gonna say it depends on what those old people are eating. Hello, I'm gonna say it depends on what kind of food you're putting into your mouth, and if you're eating not so good cheap stuff, then probably so. Okay, sixteen thousand Americans were surveyed. Wow. And researchers found that individuals 65 years or older pass gas. What are you going to say, less or more? Well, just I would say more, but I, I don't know. I'm going to say more just because it's a 50-50 chance. And I would have said more, too, before uh -oh. I read this. Uh-oh. Because, yes, the younger group does a whole lot more farting than us old people. Really? And I would have said older people because I know I've gotten as I've gotten older, right? I can't even walk down the candy aisle <laughs> of the grocery store without it just like you know the little trumpets come out, and you know, you're like, oh my god, and maybe if I like sing while I'm walking down the aisle, and you try to get in an aisle where there's not anybody, you know, at you know, you're trying to be alone in the aisle. You hope. And then it just kind of, you know, it kind of like, you know, plays the little medley that it wants to play. 
So see, my guess would definitely be older people. Because sure. I know I'm doing it a lot more as I'm older than I was younger. And again, I think, <laughs> and I have I'm I am not a dietitian or a whatever that gastro. And I don't I don't even know what you call those guys who specialize in whether you fart or not, but I'm sure there's a whole scientific study for that. I well, there was. I'm just reading the data. I know. That's what I'm saying. And I would have thought you're I would have agreed with you. I would have thought as you got older, I don't know, maybe things loosen up in there. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's the meds us older people take. I don't know. I still think it's I still think it depends on the food. I really do, because. I think if you're eating a healthier diet, I think, I think, and I could be wrong. I think if you're eating a healthier diet that you probably fart less. I think, I think the junk food might be getting in there and, you know, your body's trying to do something with it. But what do I mean? What do I know? It's an interesting topic. That's for sure. Now, I will tell you this. Yes. uh, There for a while. I have tried a few times down the road. I know that you are now pretty much. On the meat diet. Yes, carnivore, where, keto, yes. Where, where you're eating lots of meat, but there has been times, especially, you know, in my life with heart problems and stuff, mm-hmm. I have tried, and again, using the word tried. Tried. Uh, you know, becoming a vegetarian type diet person. Vegan, yep, vegan, vegetarian. Let me yes. tell you, whenever I do vegan, whoa, that's much more... The trumpets come out much more, much more gas you, producing. Yes. Yeah. Then when you're, then when you're, you know, eating meats. Yes. Because your body, I think, again, I'm not an expert, but what I've done a little bit of reading and a little bit of watching experts on YouTube, I mean, real people on YouTube, not the kids who just make up whatever they want, real doctors who talk about how your body has to work harder to process things that it normally doesn't process like you know if you're buying those you know i'm not going to name the brand names but there are companies out there who are making like burgers out of plant material and if you read the ingredients of what's in it you're like oh my gosh i'm eating this this looks like a science experiment it is a science experiment what am i saying as opposed to hamburger which is made of cow so one ingredient you know it's like okay i think i think my body knows what to do with that now, is it good for everybody? I don't know that. I I know what works for me. I, so I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. But before you go diving into this vegan, vegetarian, crazy stuff where you're making these crazy recipes just to make it sort of taste like something you want to eat, what are you putting in there? What's going into that? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. They, they, some, I have heard, too, that like, like the vegan hamburgers or whatever. Yeah have more processing than, you know, a lot of your processed food. And they say you're not supposed to eat processed food. Nope. 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 The less, the fewer. And one of the doctors on YouTube says this, the look at the ingredient list on the food that you buy. If it has one, don't buy it. Apples don't have ingredient lists. Bananas don't have ingredient lists. You know, uh, broccoli does not have an ingredient list. But if you're buying something that's got, you know, soybean oil processed this or blah, 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 blah. Yeah, not, that's not good for you. That your, your body doesn't know what to do with it. Our bodies weren't made to process all of that stuff. Not that it's bad for you. It might be. I don't know. Your human body has been eating the way it's been eating for hundreds of thousands of years. And in the past 50 years, we've decided to start processing all our food. And it's this is what it gets us. Fat, overweight whatever, whatever, farting a lot, (laughs) all of that. I was going to really put you on the line there and say, I don't live with anybody. You do. Would you say there is more or less farting in your house over the years? Oh, there's maybe though. (laughs) This is just a theory. Okay. I'm I'm going to put that hook out and see if BJ Odom bites on it. (laughs) Remember your dating days. My yes, I do. Yes. And I remember, you know, especially like in movies and things, you've always heard women, I'm not even going to eat. Because, you know, when, when, when you first start dating someone. Right. Even, even as a guy, I remember when I would date someone for the first few times. Right. You never want to fart in front of them. You know, you'd want to, you know, if you had to, I think I got a low tire. Let me get out and check the tire. <laughs> oh, 
pop and walk around in the car a couple times, look at all four tires, make sure they were all okay. Get back in the car. Everything's good. I, I, I will admit I've never heard that one before, but I've heard other excuses. Yes. That's so a good one. I think the longer you know one another. Yes. The longer you cohabitate with one another. Yes. The more, hey, I got to rip one. I'm just going to rip it right here in front of you. Right. And I, so, yeah, it's more now than it was in early days. But you're just saying that that, that you, you're just saying that it might be more now because you're OK to do it in the presence of your of your significant other. Yes. OK. OK. So perhaps the amount of gas passing has not changed. The, the amount has not changed. It's just the, um, the willingness to do so in the presence of the other person. Yes. <laughs> if we can but, be scientific about it. But see, here's another reason why I think older people would be higher on the list than, than this survey uh -huh. or this study or whatever. Yes. Because I remember my mother-in-law. God bless oh, her soul. Good. She's no longer with us. Oh, good, because this would be your immediate death if she was. But I remember her in her older years, her senior yes. years, walking down. You know, they, we might be shopping with them or, you know, we might be at a store with them. Right. And again, the horn section would come out and it would just like play the whole row. I mean, the whole aisle. <laughs> and she would even talk about that. She goes, oh, I can't believe it. But, you know. Right. So I would say, and I still stand by it, older people fart more, even though the study says younger people do. But maybe. And maybe, and maybe it's just that old people get to the point where we just don't care. <laughs> maybe that's it. We're willing to do it wherever, and we just don't care, whereas young people are more concerned about their image in but, public. But, you know, we, talk, we talked a little while ago about processed food and other things. Yes. Maybe the younger kids today have more processed food. I'm maybe sure they, they eat. So maybe nowadays. Yeah. I haven't followed any around, but maybe the younger people do pass gas more than older people that would be my if i were being paid for the scientific study that's where <laughs> that's where i would start that's where i would think all right this is my th what do they say thesis this is my best guess now let's see if that's true true or not and again i i'm i'm, I'm totally guessing as to whether or not processed food causes more gas or not i think it does i it seems like it should but I don't know. Oh, I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. Just a guy that eats a lot of hamburgers and steaks. But see, now I eat more vegetables. The more vegetables I eat, the more the band comes out. And that's true. And that's because that's absolutely positively true. I have heard that from more than one source that your body has to do some processing there. Plus the vegetables, they give off some kind of, I don't know. That's the chemistry. It's a chemistry thing. It's a chemistry thing. That's all I know. Where else, people, can you learn about farting than the BJ and Bill podcast? That's pretty much it. That's, I mean, <laughs> that's that's as good as it gets. Well, it's not as good as it gets. That's uh, as uh, as down home intimate as it gets right here on the <laughs> BJ and Bill podcast. <laughs> ah, I love that. Well, I love that. So, um, changing subjects, <laughs> or have you? Or is there more? Or is there more farting? No, to I'm. Talk about I, I'm I'm done with farting. Okay, good. Okay, good. I I was off to the sports world, and I was I was disappointed that neither Florida team is in the Final Four for basketball. Unfortunately, oh no, they were in the Final Four. They were in the Final Four, but neither one is playing for the championship. You're correct. That's You're correct. Is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Miami got Miami got beat by UConn, and uh, the Florida Atlantic University Owls. Did it, this is like when remember back in the day, back to Fort Myers days when FGCU, Florida Gulf Coast University, actually was in the tournament. They didn't go super far, but they won a couple of games. They won a couple of rounds. It's like, who are these guys and where the heck are they from? And everybody's like, yeah, they're in like Boca Raton, Florida. What? So no, they're yeah, not. They, yeah. They're from the Jacksonville area. No, no. Florida Atlantic is Boca Raton. I'm pretty sure. Hey, Siri. I thought oh. they were from the Jacksonville area. Um, and here's why I'm saying this, though. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to look it up while you ask. 
Uh, well, I was in Fort Myers. I followed FGCU basketball a little bit. Right. I don't know if today they're still in the same conference, but back the year that, you know, that FGCU went, you know, yep. to the, to the tournament and, yep. and went a couple rounds. Yep. They were in the same conference then. And I As just, FAU? Yeah. Okay. Well, they may, I don't know if they have changed or not. Um, but FAU is absolutely positively in Boca Raton. So I don't know what, why I thought Jacksonville then. Uh uh-uh, uh, no, no, that's that's Florida, that's northern something, because yeah, I don't remember that. Um, athletics, let's see what conference does it say? Heartbeat of the university, 19 division one teams, blah blah blah. Yeah, we know, but I don't see what conference they're in. Uh I don't know what conference there. What um what conference was Florida Gulf Coast University in? I don't even remember. I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. So, but no, they're absolutely positively uh in in Boca. So, yeah. So, all right, what athletic conference <laughs> conference is, is Why you look that up? Here's an interesting fact about Yes. College basketball and the playoffs. The finals for the girls uh, or the ladies. Yes, saw that. That was higher rated on ESPN than any NBA game this entire year. Wow, really? I heard that today on ESPN before our uh, little podcast here. Good for them. Well, I will tell you that I watched it. I did. I, I, I mean, I wasn't fully engaged with it, but I had it on and was watching as I was cleaning up the apartment yesterday and all of that. So absolutely. Yes. So by the way, FAU, just for the, just for those who care, Florida Atlantic changed over to the American athletic conference this year. So I don't know if that makes a difference or not, but anyway, but that's I, awesome. For the ladies. Sure that, that was, was LSU, school, yeah. but maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I could be, you know, BJ Odom has been wrong before. Unbelievable, but somehow true. But <laughs> no, back to the ladies, LSU and Iowa. It was. And I mean, for the first eh, first half, it was a good game. LSU kind of pulled away after that and kind of there. I mean, they had that. I forget the one young lady who she didn't miss. She hit every shot she took, including the fir- in the first half. She was seven for seven for three pointers. She couldn't miss. Unbelievable. Give the girl, give the girl the ball. Anyway, so. And LSU, I know that I know about the LSU ladies team because, again, our friend Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal, his daughter now is coming up to college age and is thinking about going because her dad is an LSU alumni and is thinking of going to LSU to be with the Lady Tigers. So there you go. A little bit of history for you there. You see what, what? I'm doing? Yes, I that see what was, you're doing. What is that? news right there. What's you that? You can't see me. That was the big news of the whole ladies uh, tournament. You can't, you know, the yes. old uh, wrestling, you can't see. Yeah, anybody. yeah, 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 yeah. Was it so, that or was one of the girls kind of took some flack because she was also doing, she was pointing to a ring finger, like a championship thing too. Well, she did that as she did this. Too. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you who aren't <laughs> watching the podcast on video, nobody's watching on video. BJ's waving his hand in front of his face like the old wrestler. Who was it that did that? I, you should know uh, that. I don't Cena. know that. Huh? Cena. Cena. John Cena. You can't see me. But I guess what it was now, not the ring, maybe the ring too, but a girl from Iowa did that to her earlier in the game. I didn't know that. I did not know that. And so, and, but she gets the flack of it at the end of the game for doing that. Right. And she says, now I'm the ghetto girl, but I did that where she did it at the beginning of the game. I paid her back. Right. And I'm proud to be, I mean, I saw it on ESPN. I, I don't want to, you know, I'm not quoting word for word. Right. But this girl's from the ghetto. Right. I'm proud to be from the ghetto. Right. I'm ghetto acting and I just did it. And ain't nobody going to tell me I was wrong. I, I, I can't argue with that. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to try and hold 
you know, lady college athletes to a higher standard than the guys in the NBA because the guys <laughs> in the NBA are pretty, you know, pretty direct, pretty obvious with what they, you know, the trash talk and all of that. And it's, it's part of the game. Come on. It's part of the game. I get it. I mean, as long, you know, unless it gets physical, which is, you know, that's a foul. I get it. That's no cool. That's not good. Whatever, whatever. But yeah, if you want a little trash talk here and there, eh, who cares? Go for it. Go for well, it. I, I guess one thing that might've been a little off kilter, the way I take it, I, you know, I, I didn't watch that much this morning. I was kind of, you know, doing breakfast and getting things ready. But I think, too, it was during the handshake line. <laughs> now, that, so that I did not made see. It a little bit more. Yeah, you know, that I, I didn't see. I think it was the after the game handshake line is where she did that. <laughs> that That's now you're just, as we say, now you're just showing off. <laughs> now you're just <laughs> rubbing it in. <laughs> Still. I'm super proud, not proud. It, I didn't have a daughter there or anything like that. I'm super happy for the ladies that it got the great ratings that it did. And I'm super happy that a lot of people watched and, you know, and it was a good game and it was competitive, you know, so all of that, all that good stuff. So good for you, ladies. Appreciate it. Of course, you won't hear this until Wednesday. Uh oh, but tonight is the uh, championship the men or the boys or whatever. I want to call them boys, but right. I guess they're the men's. Right. Right. As we're recording this before the men's final. So UConn and uh, UConn and San Diego State. What? Another one of those. Like, are, is that a college? Is that a really how many? You know, what do they have? Twenty five kids there? What? Anyway, San Diego State. So, yes, next week we will report on the men's finals. Yes, absolutely. And baseball season starting. So it's all good. It's all, you know, your 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 Cubs have a chance again. They haven't been eliminated yet. Hey, they, they did win their very first game. I know that. There you go. Now, as I've gotten older, I've gotten away from baseball. It's just not as important as it was when I was younger. Mm -hmm. But now my son, still a big Chicago Cup fan. Big Chicago Cup fan. And, of course, you know, we were there during the first day. The play, You know, the baseball began. Opening day. And he didn't see the game either, but he had to check it on his phone. He said, ah, the Cubs won the first game. So there you go. He was, yeah, he, I, was a ha he was a happy camper. I, I, most of my memories of your son are in Chicago Cubs, either hat or Jersey or something. So, yeah, which is weird because he's never lived there. Has he? Uh, yeah. Up until the time he oh, was four. Until he was four. He lived in, he lived in Indiana. Northwest with Indiana. With dad. So, hey, mom. okay, he yeah, didn't I live get with it. dad until you know right. he was like four when he, I think four. It, he was three and a half or four. I don't know when we got when we when we parted ways, right? He's that's basically a, been with me. That's his problem, but I don't understand how he's such a good businessman. But he has basically been with me. Well, Susan, Susan may have been uh, the saving grace. Oh, yes, but, your wife, but yes. he was with me from. I don't know from, you know, the divorce time till pretty much, you know, he's not with me now because he's out right. on his own. Right. Well, obviously some of it rubbed off because his first career move was to join his father in radio. Yeah. I mean, that's how it started. Now we didn't know at the time that when he decided to get into radio, that he was going to be a rock star in business and whatever he could have just done like his father and me and just been on air personalities or whatever with the ups and downs of that but he was smart enough to see that there was you know business opportunities there as well so good for him yeah he, he found his exit plan early <laughs> yes yes but he, he found his exit plan and still being in the business which was pretty amazing that's true that's true and, his own and, path in yeah. the business in the in the media business or whatever. So he was smart enough to recognize the whole podcasting thing when it was just getting started and with the online radio stations, like you said, with Shaq Fu Radio, of which I am very familiar, and Muddy Country and all of that. And he got into those things, and then he added the podcasts, and now he's adding the music. He's turning into a business empire. It's no kidding. <laughs> to which Dad says... Darn right, he's got to support me in my old age. I know. <laughs> I tease him every time I go up there because yeah. I look in his back. You know, like I said, he's on about two and a half acres or something like that. And I'll look back and I go, "Yeah, my trailer could go right about there. That'd look pretty good out there." <laughs> and what does he say to that, uh, Grandpa? 
Uh, I think he like turns his head and goes start. I got to I got to work on uh, putting in this podcast right now. <laughs> Things to do. Things to do. Talk later. See ya. Bye. <laughs> now I will say this: we got to spend some good quality time together. We were there for three days. Cool. Uh, but also, I have to say, he's a busy man. Oh yeah. Hello. Like you know, it's like oh wait a minute, I got to get on a conference call. Oh wait, I got to do this. Oh, wait, I got to do this. Sure. I got to do this, and then we'll go to lunch. It's like, you know, he, he's thinking, man, I was never that busy when I was, <laughs> when I was. Well, because we weren't running, we weren't running full on businesses. We were just on the radio. So, uh, you know, while we were on the radio, yes, we were fully engaged from, you know, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. every weekday morning. You're not, you know, BJ and Bill are not meeting you for coffee. We're not going out for breakfast. We're not whatever. But then, it, you know, you get off the radio and, okay, now you got time for meetings and lunch, you know, lunch dates and client meetings and all that sort of thing. But, yeah, it's not like running a, a full-on business like the way he's doing. So hats off to him. I mean, he's doing it with, what, him and and Jay and, and a couple, you know, one or two other helpers okay. or whatever. I don't know what they're doing, but they're rocking it. Remember now also when we were uh... – in the clear channel studios yes down the hall with us was uh flying brian yes uh do you remember and now, now i just want to put my hand my head in the sand oh you forgot I, something i can't believe i forgot his name oh my god who this is what happens when you get old you forget he was on he was on the morning show with flying brian he was the guy who uh, mixed the music oh, oh. my good remo g yeah, you're. I mean, yeah. See, you. I. I didn't know those kids that well because they were yeah, friends Rainbow with your G son. Also yeah, yeah, yeah. Working for him. Right, right, right. On the beat. Yeah, he was. He was on the beat, and uh, he basically uh, is uh, uh, an, an integral. Integral. Say the big word. I'm trying to say integral. Integral yeah. part. He's yeah, an integral yeah. part. Yes, of your son's company. There. Well, yeah. that's cool. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and again, we are not. The flagship podcast but we are somewhere in the Mix. we're on the organizational chart somewhere it's like yeah. it's like the ncaa tournament you know when you start with the bracket of 64 we're like way out at the end down at the bottom in the corner in some school nobody ever heard of so yeah that's us but we're still we're part of the machine we are part of the overall plan there so there you go that's because i raised the kid gave him lots of money growing up and i actually before shack food radio kicked off mm -hmm. Dad, 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 dad could should be a partner in the business, cause, but he did pay me back. Okay. But uh, dad helped him get his little empire started with a Good. little loan. Good for you. Good for you. And now, uh, like you said, paying benefits. <laughs> That's awesome. I love What's that. been happening with you? We've talked about me, 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 me. Oh, 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 oh. Well, a honestly, not too terribly much i mean you know i play my pickleball and i you know do my thing and all of that stuff i have been working on this new uh website project new marketing kind of a thing online and stuff like that nothing to report just yet but i'm one of the i'm like in the old days i would have been the guy out in the garage tinkering on the car you know with the light underneath it you know, uh, in the middle of the night kind of a thing, except I'm more of a tinkerer with computer stuff and all of that. So um, I'm tinkering on this uh, website project and, you know, all of that kind of a stuff. So, but again, not a whole heck of a lot to, to report there. I, I drove down what you, to, what's that? I remember what you told me about that project. Yes. And I got an email, not an email, but a t text message from somebody. I have no idea who it was. It was asking me the same questions you'll be asking about your little business. Oh, wanting to know if I was interested. Right. In starting a business or in being in, in making some money on the side kind of a thing. It's one of those things. Yes. Yes. No, but he was actually asking me if I uh, was hit by COVID and had a company and needed help. There, there are that if you haven't, if you own a business, if you own any kind of a business in this country and you have not yet been approached by somebody with this IRS loan tax pro program called ERC, Employee Retention Credits, I see TV commercials for it now. I see it online everywhere. And I'm sure that businesses are sick and tired 
of being bombarded by that. It's a real thing. It's not a scam. There are some good companies that are doing it and some other ones that are kind of a little fly by night. But basically, if you own a company and you were in business during the <clears throat> pandemic years, the IRS has this program to kind of refund you some tax money, depending on how many employees you had. If you kept employees on and, you know, had to pay salaries and health care benefits and all that when we were all when the world was shut down. So, yeah, it's it's a good program. And I've referred a couple of different companies to it. And the one company that I have a partnership with them, you know, have a deal with. Um, yeah, I can get a little bit of a commission on that. I haven't done a whole heck of a lot with it, but yes, it's a thing. It's a real thing. So don't be afraid if somebody approaches you on that. And if you, by the way, if you do own a company and you haven't been approached on that yet, and you had five or more employees back in the pandemic times, yeah, you can get some money back. So feel free to reach out to, to Bill Stevens and I'll be glad to help you set that up. <laughs> Yeah, you could just email him BJ and Bill Podcast at gmail.com. You can email at BJ and Bill Podcast at gmail.com and it will I will find it and I will I will hook you up with all it. I mean, literally, it's a phone call. It's you take a 15 minute phone call. They ask you how many employees you had and a couple of other questions. And if you qualify, then they move ahead. And yeah, you got to eventually turn in your turn in. You have to eventually share your tax documentation from the pandemic years so the IRS can review it and say, yes, you qualify congrats you're getting some money back but it's a big deal i wish you was dealing in solar say that again because i get a lot of those hey we can save you money on solar you know we can hook you up with solar and i know there's a lot of fly-by-night companies doing that and then of course there's some legitimate companies that are also doing that and i would like to at least pursue information on someone who is doing that, but you know, don't know which way I would fall after I get the information, but I would like to know the information. And is that, do you know, is it, can you do it in your community? Cause some HOAs, you know, will have restrictions about that. And I don't know if you do or don't, but you're talking now, about putting I, a, now we are in a duplex, right? But now we are both responsible for our dwelling, right? Including our, you know, like the last villa that we lived in, we weren't responsible for the roof. You know, we we're like a condo. If anything happened oh. to the side of the house or the right. roof, exterior. Yeah, they were responsible. Got it. This one, okay. Let's say in eight years, ten years, or whatever, it needs painted again. Right. We're responsible. Wow. Let's say a storm comes through and the roof is gone. Right. We're responsible. Oh. So the way I was told uh, from the uh, HOA headshot or yeah. head kahuna here. Right. Is that they really can't deny it if I want to do it. Just like if you live in a, I guess, condo or something and you want to get uh, back in the day when it was really big satellite TV and you wanted yeah. a satellite, they couldn't deny you because of a certain right. law that was passed. Right. I guess it's the same way with solar. Interesting. So they can't deny me is what I was told by this head, you know, like I said, yeah. this head honcho from yeah, yeah. HOA. Find yourself, and we're coming down to the to the time here. So I'll just I'll just throw my two cents in, and that is next time there's a home show somewhere, you know, and I'm sure in Orlando they probably have one in the spring and the fall where they fill up the arena with, you know, booths and you know vendors and stuff like that go to one of those and you'll probably be able to talk to three or four different people who do solar and then just find somebody that can give you some good information and see how that would work so but yeah that's a cool idea that's a very cool yeah, i know we were talking about moving before we bought this place mm -hmm. and i think i may have told you this which i my wife has way too much stuff to have ever have done this and i knew it but i i got excited right and my wife actually talked about moving in that way we could be you know down in Fort Myers for a while. We could be here by the daughter for a while. Right. And we both enjoy the mountains. Right. We could be in the mountains for a while. We're going to get an RV, one of the big, you know, fifth wheel RVs. Yes. Not that I would probably be able to pull it, but there are companies that will pull it for you and move right. it to different locations. Right. And a, a couple of those packages that we got into had solar panels on the roof. I mean, all the way on the roof. I mean, yeah. covered with them. Yeah. And basically, 
you could almost, and that's even using your air conditioner, could live off the grid. That'd be you know, awesome. Still have air conditioning and lights and everything. So that's where my curiosity really tweaked. I think that would be cool. I, I it might be kind of like you said, kind of a pain to move it around. But if you only did that once or twice a year, not a huge deal. But still, cool idea. And maybe yeah. we'll talk about that next time. So, but yeah, I, I think it's a great idea. I'll look into that. So anyway. So there you go. Yet another BJ and Bill podcast under the bridge. I mean, whoop, 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 when we spent whoop. when you when you spend a half an hour talking about farting, this is where you get. This is what May happens. May the fart be with you. Oh, I like that. <laughs> May the fart be with. All right, that's fine, everyone. Well, anyway, folks, go out there, eat good this week, eat well, eat for your body type, do something. Just you know, just make sure you're eating the right stuff for whatever diet you happen to be on, because that's my job. I'm going to be doing that. So, anyway. have a great week. We'll talk to everybody in one week. So uh, until that time, it's just up to Mr. Odom to say, see ya.